There are two cl basic classes of people. Welcome, family. Welcome. I'm live. Friday, April the 29th. There are two classes of family, or two classes of people on the earth, wise and stupid. There's also simple, but what's the biggest difference? The wise know who to please. The fools don't care who they please. I just had an experience this morning. That's, uh, I've had several experiences this morning. Yesterday, somebody lost favor with me that had lots of favor, lots of favor. But I gave them a little job to do, which wasn't big. They did it so horribly, so ugly, so terrible, and they knew they were it was bad and didn't say, I did a bad job, I'll redo it. No. And then when I confronted them about the bad job that they did, they wanted to talk back to me. Talking back is how you lose a lifetime of favor. A lifetime of favor. Let me start here, because this is big, how to gain favor with your boss. A boss is somebody who writes checks, okay? How many of those you have? 20? 5? Probably 1. You might have two if you have two jobs. Boss is somebody who writes you checks. For what? For solving problems for him. Don't get carried away about the prosperity sermon if you don't include your boss in the picture of your prosperity. Like one lady told me, says, I work for God. I says, bring his check to me when he writes your check this week. I'm glad you work for God. I'm so glad because that just saved me a whole lot of money. <laughs> Always let people talk. God gave you a mouth so you know what's inside the head. God gave us mouth so we know somebody's brain. This is rich. This is strong. This is important. Who do you want to please? Who do you want to please? Pastor Anna, are you there? Welcome, welcome. Amen. Thank you, thank you. How to gain favor with your boss. Your boss is the guy who makes you money. He's the one that pays your bills. He's the one who pays for your car, your gas, your food. That's your boss. I love my brother. Does your brother pay you money? Does your brother give you money? Well, no, but, he, but he's my brother. He's my brother. Wait, wait, stop. In the world of money, your boss is king. Your boss is king in the world of money. Even Paul would write, honor your master, meaning your overseer, your manager. Yesterday, Somebody that's had favor with me, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of favor, lost all the favor. One job, one tiny little job that I gave him, and he made such a jackass mess out of it, and they wanted to talk to me about back about it. I said, I want my money back for yesterday. I said, to you, I want my money back. Not only that, but I don't plan on getting any more money. And I put thousands in him. I've invested hugely in him. But it was disrespectful. The way you do a job shows your heart, shows your character. A boss is very different. A boss is very different. According to Forbes magazine, if I recall, 84% people have to be motivated and continuously inspired, continuously inspired to do a job. They have to be told what to do, when to do it, how to do it. 
84% of all employees. I haven't seen an exception to that, by the way. 14% require some inspiration. Only two out of a hundred, two percent out of a hundred, work a job without anybody pushing them, kicking them in the rear end. They're the owners. They're the bosses. They're the leaders. They're the managers, supposed to be. Now, you're not a manager if you have to be told what to do all the time. You're, you're not a manager. You may have the position, but you're not one. You just give that position in hopes you'll become one. <clears throat> Let's first talk about the importance of order. It's God's only obsession is order. Everything God talks about is order. Everything God talks about is order. The accurate arrangement of things. Orders for orders the the focus of life. To have order, you have to have a flow chart. You have to have a head. You have to have assistants. You have to have workers. A lot of men love that scripture that a man is the head of the house. But if he's head of the house, that means he's got to keep the order in the house, which means he has to buy the house. He has to cut and pick and pay for the house. If he's the man, he's got to pay for the house. He's got to pay for the furniture. And he's got to pay all the bills if he's going to be the head of the house. You're not head because I'm a man. I'm macho. I'm, I'm, a, I'm real tough. All it takes is a gun to shoot your brain out. All it takes is two fingers to take your eyes out. So you can't get too cocky being a macho man because you can be taken out. Remember that movie, Indiana Jones? Remember the guy running out there and ha cha hua hoo hua hoo Remember that? Yes. And the guy takes out his gun and goes bang and he's dead. <laughs> you ain't near as tough as you think you are. Nobody is. Nobody. Well a boss is a person you persuaded that you would solve his problems for him. And he says, I'll give you so much an hour if you'll solve my problems for me. You've probably gone to several places, businesses. You've probably gone around and looked to find the best environment because there's more than money involved, but money's the 90 9% thing. Must be close enough to your house to drive. Must be something you can do well, better than others, because you can be replaced in a single day. In a single, single day. There's been no moment in my life I didn't have that brain to know I could be replaced. And your goal is to solve problems, remove stress, make it easy and when you decide to make it hard you lose your job you called in they said we can tell you're really not happy here and what you're doing is not really something you love to do so here's your severance pay of two weeks and uh, we hope you find something that you like how do you know when somebody's unhappy when they don't do their job when they don't do their job. That's how you know they're unhappy. Not grinning. Because they can grin, smile, kiss on you. No, when they don't do their job. Very strong. The best quality that you can have in the prosperity world is to know who to please. To know the problem you're supposed to solve. 
and you're given instruction and you don't want to do it and you talk around it and pit it down and whatever. I told you how upset I was a few weeks ago when I found out five years ago when I became ill, there were four or five leaks in the roof and I found out about two weeks ago they were still leaking five years later. All the leaks still there. They had buckets. And I was so crushed and crushed over that. And I realized that my philosophy is very different than everybody on my staff. At least the leaders. That is, I don't like anything broken. I don't like anything broken. But my leaders didn't mind everything broken. Didn't mind it. Well, I do. That's why I'm boss. Now I got to do something about that. Of course, I immediately called in people, sick as I was, devastated as I was, because I can't live with anything broken. Then I realized I didn't have influence with some people. They didn't care what I wanted. It didn't matter. So I said, okay, I don't want responsibility where I have no voice. I don't want responsibility for a building when I have no influence. Now, something happened today that was precious to me. There's a young man I'd hired, and uh, he's back there in the warehouse. He's back there. And one of my people sent me this today. And I said, what is it? What, what's the deal? He had found a machine broken. I'm going to give you a little lesson on how to gain favor with your boss. I said, ah, what happened? What's the deal? He found a machine that was broken. Folding machine. And I said, well, what, what, what's the deal? Young lady on my staff here says, he said, this machine's broken. Now let me tell you what I'm accustomed to hearing. First, nobody told me a machine was broken. First mistake. First mistake. It's not to keep me updated on something broken. That's first mistake. He could have said, Brother Murdoch, I found a machine broken back in the back. Well, that's nice. I thank you for telling me about that, son, because nobody ever tells me about anything broken. There's three or four people hide a lot from me. So I really appreciate you telling me, but he didn't. He could have also said, we need to buy a new machine. It's, a, it's an old machine. And so it's because it's old, we need a new one. Then I would say, how much does a new one cost? He could have replied, do you want me to find out? <laughs> no, we're going to pray. We're going to call a 30-day fast, and we're going to pray, and we're gonna, God's going to show us what to do with a broken machine. But you know what he did? He fixed the machine. He fixed the machine. He fixed the machine. Then he called me, Dr. Murdoch, uh, you had a broken machine back here and I fixed it. Uh, do I get a reward for it, Brother Mike? Do I get a reward? Mm. No. He didn't do that. But he sure jumped up the ladder of success with me. Wow. Fast. So I called my check writer, 
a ministry. I said, write him a check for $200. In the left-hand corner, put bonus for a repairing machine. He didn't ask for it. Somebody said, well, wouldn't that his job? If, that, if that's his machines back there, isn't that his job to do like that? Well, see, I'm <laughs> 76. My brain's a little different. My brain's a little different. I don't like broken things. He began to stack up favor by solving problems ahead of time. Solving problems nobody else had seen. Solving problems actually nobody else cared about. How do you gain favor? Be the best. Be the best you can be to take a load off of your paws. Take a burden off of him. Take a load off of him. Now, I had become so discouraged, completely demoralized, that I didn't even, I didn't even want, I said, I'll, I'll move to, to a printing companies and just hire printing companies and we won't have a printing press. And I'd already have a price to sell my printing press to the people that want to buy the Wisdom Center. I've got a price already to sell them all my presses so I don't have to beg people anymore. But when I saw this today, hope, hope. Mm. I haven't had hope in months, months and months. I haven't had hope. But I thought, is that true? Is that true? Now, the same young man, the same young man, Yesterday, I was trying to print a brochure for everybody. It's just a brochure like this. So there's a company down the road from me that I'd stopped three times. Met the owner, met his two sons. And I had given them some books and said, how much would 500 of these, 1,000, 2,000, and 5,000, those are the amounts I asked for. 500, 1,000, 2,000, and 5,000. And uh, there was 10,000 also. How much would it cost for you to do this? And we'd ask that. So yesterday, last two or three days, we sent it again and sent a little brochure like this. I'm going to tell you what's in this today. I'll tell you what's in today. Because I want to, I want to uh, do something special for you today. And she asked the same young man yesterday, how soon could you have 2,000 of these so we could put them in the letters? Because the letter, pardon me one moment. A letter is everything to me. Letters and books is everything to me. Answering a partner on time is everything to me. Getting a, a promise of a gift of appreciation is everything to me. Not important. It's everything. Because I made a promise. I said I'd give a gift. And two months later, well, we're two months behind. We got, we got some back orders. Back orders. Back orders for what? What happened? That's big to me. Integrity. That's part of integrity. I've built my whole life on doing what I say. I've built my whole life on doing what I believe. I've built my world on that. 76 years of my life. And then somebody trivializes that. They don't need to be on my staff. They would be working for Kmart. No, Kmart's too good for them. Let me think of another. Well, it matters. So when he said, she said, how soon could you have 2,000 of these brochures? Because I've got some letters. I'm really wanting to put this brochure in. He says, by 5 o'clock, 
I'll have 2,000 brochures. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I went to this other company that I've been hoping to do business with. The man knew who I was. He's actually been to our printing press room at the Wisdom Center. He's actually visited there and liked my press, told me. He's a very rough man, and his two sons are a lot nicer than he is. Been there three times. I brought my staff there to see us, see what they're doing. It's about 15, 20 minutes away. But I thought I'll hire this company because I do a lot of printing. So I had my young assistant to call the printing company, local, and send them a copy through the computer, through the internet, ask them how much it would cost. We called them back again, sent back word, how soon could you have it done? Could they say, we'll have it done in two days? That's not too bad. Three days, okay. As of today, at 1224, on Friday, April the 29th, they still haven't given us an answer of how soon they could print my brochure. Wow. Hmm. Have you ever been disrespected? Have you? Have you remembered it? Has it affected a relationship in your life? Has it? Probably so. My request to me, when I want something, I want it. I'm serious about my request. I don't waste a single word in my life. I couldn't tell you one word I've ever wasted. Haven't thought about that till right now. Right now. I don't waste words. I'm serious about everything I say to anybody. My words are purposeful, meaningful and thought on. Like I shared bragging on myself one time, Will Robert says, I was the only man he'd ever seen in his life with maybe one exception that cared so much about their words. Will Roberts told me that boy there once. No matter. But the young man on my staff said he could have it by five o'clock. He repaired a broken machine that nobody in my whole staff had even said was broken, much less try to get it fixed. Mm. That's that's character. I can't I can't I can't train people in character. You either have it or you don't. Yes. If you can live with things broken, I can't change it. That's deep inside your bloodline. I, I can't change that. But if you're like me and you want things right, and you want things in order, and you want things repaired, well, that, that's, that's, that's a potential relationship there for friendship. And he moved quick. He moved immediately. He didn't try to talk me out of my desires. Have you ever had somebody try to talk you out of something you wanted? Have you? Have you ever had somebody try to talk you out of something you wanted? I deal with it every single day of my life. Every day of my life. But I don't like it. And today I made a decision. In fact, I'm thinking about hiring a man that he don't even know. I've had supper with him. I've been around him. 
I like his attitude. And today I wrote his wife and said, how much does he make? I can, be, I can beat that. But just somebody who won't argue with me. Somebody who won't argue with me. I don't need anybody arguing with me. I already have a devil in my life. I got that devil when I was two years old. I don't need another one. And certainly not on payroll. How do you gain favor with your boss? Identify his power of priorities. Identify his level of excellence. And try to achieve it. I doubt that you'll exceed it. I've never had anybody on my staff ever in my lifetime that exceeded my level of excellence in my lifetime, 76 years. Never. But at least try to reach it. Admire the level that your boss is trying to reach. This is a money teaching today. Yes. Because your boss is the next under God for financial world, financial prosperity. Brother Mike, I believe this scripture, and I believe this scripture, and God given his help. Okay, let's, let's take it to heart. How do you gain favor with somebody that's already showing you favor? He's already given you a job. Well, I wish he'd pay me more. Well, go find a place that'll pay you more. Go, 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 go. Go by five o'clock today. Go. Go. Go find a place that'll pay you better. Don't sit around griping at your, at your job. Go find somebody that'll pay you more. Jump into it. Try to leave your present job in good spirits. Give them a two-week notice, etc. I'm talking about gaining favor with your boss. How do you know a fool? It doesn't matter to them who they please. That's a fool. Mm -hmm. How do you know somebody wise? They know the person who's worth pleasing. Well, Brother Mike, I apologize. I, I should have done a better job, I guess. I should have done. No, 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 no. Go find your place on the earth. But get out of my hair. Don't, don't stay close to me. No. When you have bad character, you have bad character. When you're not straight, you're not straight. When you're crooked, you're crooked. Now, I've spent my entire life up to this point thinking that I could correct a crooked person. I really have. You can correct a simple person, but you really can't improve a crooked person. How do we know that? Nobody talks better than God. Nobody's got more sense than God, but he couldn't correct and upgrade Lucifer. David's the master communicator. He couldn't upgrade Absalom. Paul was the genius of genius. If you count Hebrews, he wrote 14 books in the New Testament. He couldn't improve Demas. Identify quickly, bosses, who you haven't been able to improve. Favor, if there's one thing I had from, what, 12 years old, is I always wanted to please people. To this day, I want to please people that's over me. If I go as a guest to a church to speak, I want to please them. My sermon's two hours long, and I'm Mike Murdoch. I've written a thousand books, and I want to... No, I'm a guest. I bow. I yield. How do you measure brains? By who you want to please. Can you put that book again on there, The uh, Difference in Men, if you can? If you can put The Difference in Men. The Difference in Men. The Difference in Men. It's powerful. 
The difference in men is whose favor is important to you. I have probably, I probably have at least five people on my staff, maybe six, who really want my favor. That I have about five or six who want me to like what they decide to do. <laughs> do I know who they are? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I do. Uh-huh. When I go to preach somewhere, I do anything. I didn't start off that way. I wanted them to adapt to me. But it dawned on me one day, they were writing the checks. I wasn't. Whoever's writing you checks is pretty important. Pretty important. Pretty important. I get a letter and it says, Brother Mike, here's five dollars to buy your new book. Praise God. Brenda here wants my new book. I'm so glad she likes my book. <laughs> then I open another letter. It's from a lady preacher. And the letter has a $500 check in it. Is there a difference between the $5 book purchase and the $500 seed into my vision, my life? Do you think there's a difference between the two? Some would say, well, I don't think we should show favor. Well, I hope you never get married and your husband feels that way. And he has four or five girlfriends, one for each day of the week. You want favor shown. That's what favor is all about. And we'll do anything to garner favor, anything to create favor. I told you the other day about the preacher in Lagos, Nigeria. 10,000 people. And I preached and I received an offering for his project. The offering the night before was 1.4 million. 1.4 million. Saturday morning he calls me at 11 o'clock and says, you preached too long. I want you to preach only 40 minutes. Our people didn't get home on buses till 2 o'clock this morning. Don't preach that long. Well, something in me wanted to say, why did you have your singers dance and wiggle all over the platform for an hour and a half before I got to preach? I came a long ways. You know, I got a smart mouth. It's lost a few friends. But I wanted to say something like that. But I was his guest. He was the boss. He was my boss. I could have said, I was following the Spirit. The Spirit <laughs> told me, the Holy Spirit told me to preach what I preached. And I work for God. God told me to preach two hours. He could have said, oh, I understand. Well, I'll give you a check to pay your way back. Thank you, Brother Murdoch. We won't have you back, but thank you. Do y'all have any idea the high cost of disrespect? Do you have any idea? And it won't always be discussed. You won't always be addressed. They just, they just close the doors. The friendship, I've had some friendship stop in the last few hours, just stopped. Am I going to write a book about it? No. Am I going to make a bunch of phone calls? Now let's get together. Let's talk about this tonight. No. No, it's over. That's it. I don't have time to argue like that. I wrote a, I preached one time on a sermon that's real, real rich. It's so strong it shook me in my own life for three or four months. It's all I could preach on for about a month at the Wisdom Center. And this was the do you know 
who you're talking to? Do you know the tone that you're giving? No, well, so I, I miss, I'm sorry I misunderstood. I'm sorry you misunderstood what I said. Do you understand the doors that your mouth is closing? You have any idea the door you've closed? You have any concept? Any, any at all? I closed a lot of doors, my mistakes. But not with bosses. If you're going to get along with anybody, it's nice to get along with your neighbor. You may need to borrow some sugar sometime. But your boss is the number one human on the earth for financial favor. The number one. Now he may have blessed you so much already you don't care if you get any more. He, he already was real good to you. He gave you a lot of stuff, so you're okay now. Now you don't need to get along with him. I'm just saying that that weakness inside you is dangerous. It's really, 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 really dangerous. Powerfully. Father, yes. please teach us how to talk upward. Talking upward is different than talking downward. Talking to a boss is very different than talking to a neighbor. Talking to our financial source is very different than talking to our son-in-law. We need to know who we're talking to. Now, Lord, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to change somebody's character. I'm trying to change somebody's understanding. There's people who listen to me right now that have no character. I know that. There's others that have a lot of character. I'm just trying to reinforce something here that we take to heart. Amen. Australia's here, Brazil, Canada, Ghana, Jamaica, Mexico, Nigeria, Uganda's here, UK, Zambia, Renee Poole's here. Renee, I'm so glad you're here. Apostle Sonia, thank you. And this afternoon, I want to bless your ministry in a little special way. You're quite a lady. Valerie and Bill says, excited to hear from you today. Highlight of my day. Evangelist Julius, these are powerful words for the matured. I am receiving. I think Evangelist Julius is from Spain, isn't he? Mark Mays is shaking his head. I've been in the military and a team leader and a high production manufacturing corporation. Letting things sit around broken is not an option. Mark, it shows a lot more problems, don't it? It shows they have some deep character problems, deep character flaws, real deep character flaws. See, one problem left unsolved reveals a lot of qualities. David Trujillo, Dr. Murdoch, teaching me to stay in the presence. Ah, uh, thank you for those. Those are good words. Those are good words. I want to show you on the screen ways that you can sow, sow into our ministry. And then I want to read to you a gift I want to send to you, the School of Wisdom, Volume 2. It's an e-book reader. That's very, very, very powerful. An e-book reader that has 50 School of Wisdom sessions on it. 50. 50. Judy says many people want to be pleased but aren't willing to please others. I've known Judy many, many years. She gave her a little bit of her testimony of a $58 seat. Very powerful. Very powerful. Very true. Renee Thomas is here. Renee, 
Write that young man. I think you've been told already. Write him a $200 check for repairing. That won't be the end of it, but it's today's reaction. Write him a $200 check for repairing my machine without any motivation or commands. See, there's a lot of people I ask to repair everything, but they won't. He, he not only repaired it without mentioning it, but he repaired it without asking for money, an extra reward. And I didn't, oh, I, I'm, uh, I, got, I got thoughts. Because it shows a part of his character doing that. Shows a part of his character. Now let me tell you what I normally receive when something's broken. Do you, do you want me to, to get a bid on it? Do you want us to try to fix it? I'm accustomed to that. I'm against that. No, don't try to fix it. Catch it on fire. Burn it. That's what you want to do. See, your question. Why do people not ask questions? Because a question reveals your character. Questions very revelatory. That's why we don't ask questions. <laughs> Mabel. Thank you, Renee, for driving back to the Wisdom Center and writing him a check. I don't know if he's working there today, but uh, we'll see a way to get that check to him very fast if I have to Uber it. Nancy Newman says, your talks are helping me. That's my purpose, Nancy. I hope it does. Jen, I got my journey of new beginning seed in this morning. Write that down. Write her name down. Her last name is spelled M O C. H-K-A-T-E-L. Christopher, yay. Thank you, Christopher. Baruch from Juarez, Chihuahua. I'm inspired today. This young man doing this without me begging and pleading and asking, and I'm inspired. Jacques says, I love this topic, Dr. Murdoch. This morning, Mark Gwynn, Quinn, my boss, came to me and says he's going to see if he can extend my visa. Shock, make him happy. Don't just say, I really appreciate you doing it. Write him a note and says, your extra help in my visa means the world to me. Can't thank you enough. Write your feelings. Paul Chadwick. Troubleshooting is a good talent for people. Not only for the person, but also for people around that person. I would not hire a person who can't think on their own. Well, you must not have any employees, Brother Paul. <laughs> or you'll have a very tiny, tiny business. Winnie. Watching from Zambia. Dr. Diana Hudgens Brown said your advice today is golden wisdom. Can you put up the other so I can see the other words she wrote? Hold on. Your truth can be extremely direct, but so, so necessary. I love your honesty. Your love to want to protect us with telling us your life experiences is priceless. Thank you from the bottom of my Grateful heart. Thank you, Dr. Brown. I'm too direct, but I don't have, I don't have another hundred years left in my life. Cindy Jones says, this teaching could not be more needed. We need to weed our gardens and pay attention to those who are a blessing. You're teaching us to know which is a weed and which will bear us good fruit. Cindy, I love your communication competence. You're quite skilled. Few can talk at that level. Leanne says, how to gain favor. Dr. Mike, it's Friday. Wisdom fire. May God's word be a consuming fire in us as you mentor. Amen. David, I got your seed from Australia. Hey, talk to me. The loudest voice in your life. 
is a cheerful investor who trusts you. You can't get a better voice in your life than a cheerful investor. I'm glad this happened this, this morning because I've had the giver killed in me the last few days. And this, this so inspired me again. I sent a note to my Christina who was on an appointment and my wife is extremely wise person. I married her because she was trustworthy. I didn't really catch on to her wisdom till after we were married two months and then I began to see the level of her wisdom. Tamara White, Canada. Tamara was very consistent in supporting me and holding me up. She said this teaching, quote, this teaching is so profound, so needed today. I am carefully taking notes as I begin my new job on Monday. My main goal will be to please my boss. Tamara, add these to your notes. Know your boss's background. Know it like the palm of your hand. How old is he? When's his birthday? How many children does he have? How many people's on the staff? He employs. What's his number one goal in his business? Number two, what hours and what days does he want you to work? Be available, adaptable. If he wants you to work overtime, let him know that ahead of time. Tell him, said, my goal is to be the most dependable person in this business for you. Tell him that. He'll say, he'll say, oh, I like that. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. I need that. He'll do that if he's got some sense. But he won't necessarily believe you. Communication with a boss is critical. It's big. It's huge. What does he feel when you talk? What does he believe you really mean when you talk? Are you trying to get sugary so you'll get close to him? He knows that. He knows. A boss sees what nobody else sees. And he compares you with the employee he talked to before you walked up. He compares you with every person. Like when someone calls your phone on your business. They're comparing you with the last business they just talked to. Comparison occurs hourly. With everybody. And every request made by your boss is an invitation for credibility. Somebody I loved greatly disrespected me and then disrespected the second time to talk back to me and to try to give a reason for what they did. He wrote me this morning an apology, but it was a sugary kind. It wasn't real. He won't change. I won't answer him back. It's over. He didn't know who to respect. Disrespect is a lifetime memory. I won't hurt him for sure, but I don't want him in my world anymore. I won't reward him anymore. I won't invest any more in him. I've invested over $30,000. Oh. A-I-N-A. Ina. A-I-N-A. T. Joseph wrote, Thank you for your consistency, Dr. Mike. It means a lot to us. Desiree says, Getting my daily dose of your manifold wisdom. Caleb, talking upwards is different than talking downwards. I reminded some of my team today, you know I require five bids. Don't ever, ever, ever again ask me if four is enough. Ever do that again. You know the protocol. Stay with the protocol. Stay
stay with the protocol. I'm reading your words, Christopher, about the $58 C. Martin says, I'm so in my way out of poverty. Martin Wark, remember to sow honor around you. So honor upward. So forgiveness downward. And forgiveness doesn't mean someone changes. It means forgiveness is an opportunity for someone to change. Doesn't mean they will. Need to know that. Mark Mays just wrote me, Dr. Murdoch, I've been having this vision of you sitting by a fireplace reading to online viewers from one of your books and being viewed by millions. This would also lead to an audible book. That's a good picture, Mark. Cindy Jones quote, you're never too direct. Your frank manner has saved us 10,000 arrows and a mountain of unspeakable pain. Your bride, Christina, is peerless in her beauty, kindness and wisdom. Her sincerity is profound. Cindy, I have not met anyone her equal for sincerity. I can say that. I can say that. Now that you use that word. Let me just mention some things I like about my wife. She's a master learner. Master learner. Very outspoken. Very outspoken. She'll say what she feels. Since she's been married to me, I've noticed she's developed a, a higher level of gentleness than ever because I can be volatile. And she's had to work some with that. But she's as sincere as they come. I cannot even fathom my wife lying. I cannot even picture it. One of the things I love about my wife if she's uh, if she does agree with me, she knows how to bridge into her side of the deal. And she knows how to make me hear because sometimes she feels very different than I do about a decision I'm about to make. And she knows how to introduce it. So far, so far, six months, so far, She's been more correct than me so far. She said, uh, I've changed my, my plans because she was wiser in what she said. Here's a good thought. How do you know a wise husband? He changes his plans after a wifely conversation. <laughs> wow. Jackie Holland, I hadn't got your seed to you. Write that down. I hadn't got a seed. Jackie, we try to go to your website. It doesn't work. I need your mailing address. Georgia Thomas has been a pillar of the Wisdom Center. If there's anybody I would trust, it would be Georgia Thomas. Julie, good to see you here today. I've missed you. Thank you for your time and teaching. It's irreplaceable, Julie. What I teach is irreplaceable, in my opinion. I crave the revelation God pours into me. Diane Krajewski, wonderful to be with you live. Fabulous topic to learn from you on today. Okay, let me say this. How to gain favor with your boss. Admire him. Because he built a company you didn't. Admire him. Admire him. 
Did you show the ways to give to the ministry? Show it one more time, would you? Natalie for Israel. Great wisdom. I think so. I think what I'm saying is powerful. It's important. Not everybody in your life is in your money circle. Very few are in your money circle. Very few. You should identify who they are. The man who writes you a check every seven days, every 14 days, is different than every other relative you have. People who write you checks re regularly, people who write you checks regularly are practically irreplaceable. The most difficult thing I've had to do in training my staff, the most difficult thing is the importance of a partner. They can't quite seem to get it. I don't ever, ever forget the only reason I have a ministry today is because of you. You're caring. You've discerned trustworthiness. You've discerned sincerity, realness, don't think I'd have take that lightly, ever, ever, in my opinion. Priscilla, thank you for every seed that you plant for my projects. Rose, I'm glad you're here today. You need this. Enjoying this very important wisdom teaching. Rosa. Zay found a broken machine and repaired it for free without discussing it. That's why I'm giving him an extra $200. Let me read to you a gift I want to give to the $200 seed today. School of Wisdom number two. It's an ebook reader and you can listen to 50 titles of my teaching. These are the titles. Now I'm going to print this and send it to you. The power of ritual and how it can stabilize your life. I got very involved. I used to teach some in Catholic churches down in Mercedes, Texas. Down in South Texas. And the Catholic priest asked me to teach in their Catholic churches. When I saw the power of ritual in the Catholic church, we can talk about, you know, anything, but ritual is a major part of the Old Testament. And I share about the power of routine and the power of ritual. Ritual will take you further than passion. When I was 36, I ran 5.30 every morning, five miles every morning, every day. I fasted three days a week for two years, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. My greatest revelations on the assignment were given to me during those two years. Ritual, come into God's presence seven minutes a day. That's one of the audios, 50 audios on this incredible gift I have for you. It's my gift for a $200 seed for my television and radio ministry. 52. The golden gift of access and the hidden secret for receiving access. By the way, some of these have several hours. They're not just one hour. They're one topic. They're 50 topics. 
but each one of I've just mentioned has two sessions. So there's actually more than 50 sessions. 53, my answers to perplexing questions. I opened up for two hours at one of my conferences, and I answered people's questions for two hours. And people told me that it's the best part of the conference. All my life I've heard people say, the best part of your teaching is when you answer questions. But I have them here. The seven most important decisions you will ever make. Session 55, how to increase your effectiveness in your workplace. It has three hours of teaching. 56, 12 ingredients of a perfect day. Boy, that was glorious. I was 37 when God gave me that. Showed me that the goal of life was not a perfect life, but to create a consistently productive, happy day. And there's 12 ingredients. And I, it's phenomenal. One is a written list of your priorities. Number two is to identify the unnecessary and delay the unnecessary. 57, the law of recognition and how it changed my life. That's my book. 58, how to customize your personal time management system. 59, some great wisdom keys, number 183 to 189. 60, things that matter the most in life. 61, seven qualities of an uncommon father. Over Four overlooked keys that unleash in prosperity. Three forces your dream will require. Seven ways the word of God will change your life. Seven decisions that decide your greatness. The third voice. Boy, that was a revelation. When I begin to lose friends, that people are like protégés, found out that there was a third voice that had entered their life. A third voice. Wisdom keys, just stacks and many wisdom keys here. The mystery and the miracle of mentorship. 25 decisions that birth an uncommon life. 75, the uncommon dream within you. If you have a dream, something you want to accomplish, what are the keys? 76, how to communicate effectively with people. You must study the receiver. In every conversation, you must look at a person, talk slow enough for their understanding, look for reactions every moment of your life. Study the reaction of what you're saying. You must listen masterfully because people are not necessarily great communicators. That was hard for me to grasp. The average person is about a five on a 10 scale in communication. Very few people are skilled at conveying what they're feeling. Seven questions you must ask yourself. Keys from my book, 5001 Wisdom Quotations. Communication tips. What matters? Five things matter in communication. What's the environment? What's happening in the environment around you? Who else is listening? Who can misunderstand what you're saying? I have to stop some conversations because of someone's presence who does not understand the context of my talking. Seven decisions that would decide your joy. 11 turning points in my life. I can't believe all these are in this one. I can't believe this is fabulous. I haven't read these in so long, but we've put them. I thought for probably six months getting this to put. At least six months I've thought to get this together. Six months for this one product. Seven greatest memories of my mother and how she affected my life. My mother wouldn't argue. One time I told her I'm leaving the ministry. She says, so God's going to get you. That's what she said. God's, God'll get you. My mother never tried to be God. 
she was the voice of conviction for sure. Mm -hmm. My three greatest persuasions, seven, how to pray effectively for prosperity. If you're going to pray for prosperity, you must ask the Holy Spirit, block any decision that's not your perfect will. That must be in the prayer. Block any decision I'm making. Block favor if you're not involved in this decision. I share with you the real estate scenario. Billionaire 300, the hidden power of effective conversation, the master secrets in the art of asking, my seven greatest memories of my mother, the vision of this house. And there I gave exactly what I wanted to see at the Wisdom Center. It's called the vision of this house. Master secrets for achieving your dreams. Seven keys to doubling your finances. Renaming your moments. Boy, that changed my life. Renaming your moments and changing your world. Seven things you must pursue to create the uncommon life. Seven things my father did right. The seven decisions that control your financial world. Can you believe that? Wow. No. Oh. It took me over six months to get this to the finish line today. It's School of Wisdom number two, audio library. It is incomparable to anything on the earth today. And I put this in an ebook reader. The ebook reader is small. You can carry it with you. Put it in a purse. Keep it in your car for when you're driving down the road. Pastor Anna, can you believe these, these titles? I love those titles, Dr. Murdoch. I love What stood out to you? One of those. In this teaching, Dr. Murdoch, there's so much. I love when you said that in the equation of prosperity, the boss is the king. I really love when you said that. I also love when you said, Dr. Murdoch, that it's the person that we are to please. I love the example you gave about the neighbor. There's a difference in the relationships. Who we're pleasing makes the difference. And I love your titles of the School of Wisdom. I'm elated of your audio library. This is a phenomenal gift, Dr. Murdoch. I love them. It's out of this world. Yes, sir. It's out of this world. I begged Dora Roberts and Marcerello, begged them, and uh, Lester Simro. I begged them to put something out like this, those three men, begged them. But they said they were so busy in administration of their ministry. In Jeru, write that name down, I-N-J-A. The last name is R-U. Quote, I can't believe how much you have changed me for the better. I thank you so much. Write that name down. That's quite a statement. People don't say things like that. That's come on. Write that down. And Joe, I will honor you for that rare statement of admiration and accomplishment. You don't know how bad I need to hear that. That your life has been changed through my teaching. I value that. Cindy Jones, I love those words. I'm reading them now, Cindy. Felicia Young, that's a fabulous question. And I know the answer. It's one of the easiest questions I've ever been asked. Felicia Young, what determines when a person is rewarded 
when without asking to do something, they do it out of the kindness of their heart and a desire to serve the kingdom of God, but yet it seems as if your good deeds are overlooked. It looks like they're not rewarded. Why is that? Because you're looking to a man to reward you instead of Ephesians 6 eight. Yes. No easier questions ever been asked me. And I had to fight through that. You don't reap where you sow. You never reap when you sow. You merely reap what you sow. Matthew 7 verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you desire that men would do to you, do first to them. Ephesians 6, 8. Knowing that any good thing you will receive from the Lord. I have received very little from the people I gave the most to. Ephesians 6, 8. And Felicia, I'm glad you asked that because it bothered me because I would bless somebody, do something for somebody, and there would be no, no, uh, cons- no reward. This was 2.30 in the morning on a five-day fast Friday in the garage, 11514 Eagle View Lane, Houston, Texas, when I was about 31 or so. Servants, that's employees, we all work for somebody. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling. It's the Bible. Let's start again. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, humans, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as if you're working for Christ. Not with eye service, meaning not while they're looking at you. As men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service, as to the Lord, and not to men. He said, this thing is bigger than your boss. Work for your boss as if Jesus is standing there watching you, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, This is biblical. This is the Bible. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought my boss supposed to. No, 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 no. Then he continues to a boss. Don't work for anybody that's not a reward master. I'm a very, 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 very man who rewards. Not only did I give $200 to the young man who fixed the machine, but I gave a $100 bill to the lady who sent me. I gave a $100 bill to her for sending this to me because it motivated me. I got inspired again about printing. And I gave her a $100 bill for thinking to send me a picture of this so I could feel the progress. I could see what was happening as they printed. If you work for anybody that rewards you, which is God, don't worry about it. Felicia, God said, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive from the Lord. Ye masters, 
do the same thing unto them, knowing that your master in heaven, that there is neither respect of person in him. Do the same thing. Powerful, isn't it, Pastor Anna? Yes, sir. I love that. Yes. It's taken me six months to get all these downloaded. Six months to get this ready for you. There's 50 topics, but some of the topics have up to three hours in them. So try to understand that. Some have three different CDs for one topic. And I put them all. Can you open? Who can open this for me? Evangelist Julius says, men are not always capable of rewarding fellow men. That's true too. Men are limited, but God always uses men to, to do his stuff though, brother. Yes. God won't ever write you a check. Let me know, Julius, when he does. God uses people to bless people. Joy Kushner fills me with great expectation. Julio says, I'm glad that you're inspired today. Keep doing like this. I hope to. Julio, I am inspired. When I saw this today, they were printing so you would be able to have this. Okay. My heart leaped. Mm. Laziness. Dishonor and disrespect, disinterest are killers of prosperity. Why be a good title? Good title. Yes, sir. The five killers of prosperity. Yes. Disregarding the laws of money that's in the Bible. Disinterest. Jealousy of the wealthy will kill your prosperity because you can't learn from anybody unless you admire them. You can only admire. You can only admire. Is it already 120? Lord. Dr. Diana Hudgens Brown says, I can honestly quote, I can honestly say the highlight of my day is spending this precious time in the mentorship room with the master communicator. Whoa, Lord. That's a little high level there, but I'm trying. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for those words. Cindy Jones says, what a phenomenal answer. Ephesians 6 A. I I love that answer. There's so much wisdom here. Nancy Newman says, is this collection audio or written? Audio. It's audio. If I live maybe 20 years, I may be able to get it in. We, I personally receive back every word I ever say in a booklet, but it's not ready. But I've got something. Who can bring me? A, can you bring me a collection of the daily books? I want to show them a stack of them. I... Uh, I have three people that do transcribing for me, Cindy, or uh, Nancy, excuse me, Nancy Newman. I have three people that do transcribing for me. It costs me a lot of money to transcribe every money, word that I say. And last night I made a decision that I was going to stop all the trans transcribing completely and go only to this. But when I saw the printing press today and the folding pre folder working, when I saw that Zay had worked on my machines on his own and did it, I got inspired thought, if I find the right people, 
I may be able to get, if I find the right people, I may be able to turn these books away for everybody. Every day, Nancy, I don't think anybody else may be interested, but maybe, probably Dr. Brown would. Every day I get a book like this. These are a collection of books. Got stacks and stacks, but they're not ready for the public because they haven't been edited. I'm the only one that can really edit there. Here's how they look inside. This is book 2,933. Wow. That's how many books I've written. Mm. 2,933. How to talk to a man. Mm. 25 reasons I write books. It's book 2940. 30 power topics you must master. Mm. It's book 2579. What really, really matters most. It's book 2834. Things I believe. 31 decisions that made me a multimillionaire. And I'm really not really wealthy, so don't let that multimillionaire I'll probably change it. But I do have more than one million. I'm worth more than that. It's book 2417. Wow. What I learned what? from my father. Book 2836. The Magical Law of Adaptation. It's book 2832. Nancy, does this help you? Wow. Book 2933, How to Talk to a Man. Wow. This is, They're gorgeous, Dr. Murdoch. This is the few wow. of them. Thank you, Pastor Anna, for those words. Thank you. I'm trying really hard to pour out everything I believe, everything I know, and everything that can protect people. I want to do something today. The first 25 people who would like to, now, listen carefully. It's book 2940. It's book 2940. I will have my staff make a free copy of this unedited Unedited, book 2940, 2940. You can't put that on the screen, can you? I don't know if we've... The first 25 people that call the book number today by 7 o'clock, the first 25, I will send you this book as a gift from me. 817-759-2665. At 25, we cut off. It won't be available. Literally, can't buy it. I hadn't edited yet. But I want to do this to the first 25 people. 25 reasons why I write books. The book number's on the screen. Wow. Dr. Diana Brown says, I love, love, love my Dr. Mike Murdoch books. I hope you will never stop printing them. I would cry if you do. I love holding them in my hand. Dr. Diane, I do too. Write her name down. She's VIP, VIP. Now, Dr. Brown, because of what you just said, I won't have one of these made for you anyway. Don't worry about calling. You don't have to. What you just said earned it. Dr. Diane, Hope came to me today about getting more books out after Isaiah Cavada fixed my machine without anybody asking him. He found the machine broken. He didn't complain, said the machine's broken. He repaired it. 
He earned a new level of respect from me today. He earned a new level of respect from me today. He earned a new level. He saw something broken and fixed it. And then another young lady on my staff sent me a picture of the machine operating as they begin to... Let me tell you how inspired I got, Pastor Anna, you know. Let me tell you how inspired I got today. I got so inspired. I better not say that. Till I, but I got very inspired so much that hope, which I haven't had, hope came back in me mm-hmm. that I may be able to print some more books, new books. Yay. Hope came wow. to me. Hope came Yay. in me. Look at that. Look at that. Dr. Diana Hudgens Brown just said, look for $200 seed in your cash app today. I want to be the first to plant the seed into your life for for the School of Wisdom number two audio library. She's sending that to me. Cindy Jones said something strong here. She said, if the main boss's wishes are not the wishes of middle management, should the lowly worker adhere to the spoken wishes of the honor of the business or do what the mid-management dictates? I've had that to happen to me. That's... A touchy thing, Cindy. I follow the big boss myself. Because, but the mid boss, the mid management boss will retaliate. There's a way to communicate that. And you say to your middle, mid management boss, boss, you say, I understand what you said. Now, so and so said, and they said, when did you talk to him? Well, he had said that. And there's a way to communicate with the person that's right over you. You're going to have to make them happy because they will retaliate. Nancy Newman said, yes, I want the collection. I'll be contacting. Okay. Leanne Smiles quote, we have to get your books edited to high excellency. I want the magical law of adaptation book. Sir, how can we help? Well, you just, you just help me by showing that you care. Right, Leanne's Mm. name there. Yes. Dr. Diana Rudgens Brown said, what an awesome young man. He is a keeper. I want to reward him for helping you. I'm going to I want to send you an extra $100 to your cash app to reward him. Please, Mm -hmm. may I do so? Yes. Yes, Dr. Brown. Yes. And that's how prosperity works. The place you create pleasure is the place your prosperity begins. That's the way prosperity works. You can believe all the ideas I have for him right now. That's so rare. That's not just a nice thing he did. It reveals character. Viviana, you ought to be very thankful today that you're teaching your grandson had an impact. Be very thankful today because a lot of grandsons don't listen Diane Krajewski says, wow, what divine timing and interruption to keep you focused on printing the wisdom of heaven, Dr. Mike. Diane, yes. on the building, the Wisdom Center, it says pursuing, proclaiming, and publishing the wisdom of God. That's my mission statement. That's my mission statement. And I'm fighting every devil in hell over it. 
Wow. Mark May says, I received my 10 copies of your book, The Leadership Secrets of Jesus. Thank you with all my heart. There are going to be presents and gifts for some important people in my life. Cindy Jones says, I've just edited the magical law of adaptation. Can I send it to me, to you? Yes. Yes, Cindy. I have a personal post office box that's not ministry. It's my personal. But if you'll send it to box 1669, if you'll send it to me, I'll see, I'll, I will look for it. I will look for it. Please send it to P.O. Box 1669. That way, I'm going to look for it. Cindy, I didn't know you had edited that, and I need to see it because I want to compare and see your editing, and uh, I have a reason for that. Cindy, you might be able to help me on this. Wouldn't that be something? Yes. If her editing would help me like that. Mm. Wow. Would you show, there's a couple of people wanting to send me a personal seed. And yes. one for Zay. Would you show my personal? My Lord. Talk to me, Pastor Anna. Talk, 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 talk. What's big in your I'm heart? So, I'm so glad you're giving us an opportunity to sow personally to you, Dr. Murdoch. I really believe that you are the richest soil on earth. We are still celebrating birthday month. We still have a couple more days of this very powerful month. And I am so thankful, Dr. Murdoch, that inspiration and hope are returning today for your books. I am elated and I thank God for Mr. Zay today for bringing that inspiration to you, Dr. Murdoch. Can you believe that? The machine was broken. Yes. It's been broken. Maybe for a year, two years. I have no idea. No one ever fixed it. Isn't that something that he went in there on his own? Hmm. Can you believe Dr. Brown what she's doing? Yay. This is a woman with a heart like my own. Yes, sir. Wow, wow. Yes. Pastor Anna, would you pray a special prayer? Yes. Over every seed sower today. Yes, sir. Father, we thank you today for every investor today. Yes. We thank you, Father, because you see every single seed. And what we sow is coming back to us. Father, I thank you today for Dr. Murdoch because you brought us good soil so that our seeds will not only prosper, but we are receivers of the impartation and DNA in his life. Thank you, Father, for the anointing for excellence. Thank you, Father, for the anointing for wisdom. Thank you that we will make good decisions. And we will protect favor above anything else. I thank you for the harvest for our beautiful family watching around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, family. We're going to run a little video and some special gifts I have for you. This $200, this is my gift for $200. It's an ebook reader that has all these all the teachings that I read out to you today, it's out of this world. Yes. It's taken me six months to get them downloaded in the School of Wisdom, Volume 2. All over the world I preached. And we've got this ready for you. School of Wisdom, Volume 2. It's my gift. It's my celebration of your $200 seed for the ministry that I'm in. You, these are ways that you could sow. Dr. Diana says, Dr. Mike Murdoch, you have made my Friday and my weekend. <laughs> Glory. 
Corporea. Delicia, Edmondson, I just woke up from a dream. We were at one of your meetings. You laid hands on me. You were praying over me in tongues and speaking prophetically over me. I received that impartation. And for 45 days, I decree, God's will will be revealed completely and totally. And you will be protected in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The first 25 people who called the book number today by 7 o'clock, 817-759-BOOK. The first 25 people who call, I'm sending this book. It's not edited, but it's book 2940. I'm sending it to you. If you're number 26, so sorry, so sorry. 25 people get this book free. 2940 hasn't been edited yet. God bless you. Watch the video. The Lord willing, I plan to be here at 5 o'clock today again with you at 5 o'clock. Don't miss us. It's worth it. How to gain favor with your boss. I want to talk again about this part two. Because if you know how to talk, if you know how to talk to your boss, he will share secrets nobody else even thinks about and knows about. Part two coming up at 5 o'clock. Texas time. Bye-bye. Here's the video. I love learning. What is wisdom? The ability to recognize a difference in people, good and bad, from Proverbs 2. What is honor? Rewarding someone for their difference. What is understanding? Knowing the value of that person's difference. I love giving gifts. I've got some $5 books I want you to notice. Right Words, book 884. 48 page books. The Difference in Men, book 568. Prayer Talk. They're different kind of books. They got graphics all inside them. Fabulous gifts to people. A gift is a picture of your heart. A gift to someone. You don't have to spend $300 to show someone you love them. These $5 books are out of this world. The book everybody's talking about a lot is goals. This is how it looks inside. Easy to read. Book 811. Then the money book. A lot of people come in. 31 days to your money world. I give you the greatest secrets of wealth. The place you create pleasure is the place your prosperity begins. Problems are invitations to favor. When you solve a problem, you create favor. Everywhere there's money, Everywhere there's favor, there's money. A problem is a door to money. Book 808. Then the book Protected. I got COVID-19. Thought I was going to die. I almost wanted to. Book 809. All these six books. $5 each. I'll pay all the shipping. I'll pay the handling. I'll get it to you. My staff answers the phone seven hours a day. There's the numbers. 12 o'clock noon to 7 o'clock at night. Many of you watch me live teach two times a day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. If you can screenshot this, you can keep a copy of it. Prayer World is where it's a place of miracles, a place for covenant, two times a day. But I wanted to show you these books. Every one of them is about 48 pages or so. It's not too much to read. Phenomenal teaching. I would urge you to go to the phone and write down the phone numbers here. Then I'm twice a day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. 12 and 7. 12 and 5. Hope this blesses you.